Today is Tuesday, August the 29th, 2023, and I welcome you all to uh, Headline News and what's going on, and uh, maybe we'll get a new, a new title or a new um, emoji or a new, I don't know, I've been doing this for over 10 years now, so I don't even know what to call it anymore, but we are the voice of the Commonwealth, connecting the dots across the Commonwealth, whether you're living in Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Canada and America, uh, we are basically connected to the dots right across. And I'm just checking all our headlines here to see if we are live across the world, across the board, to the dots, and right across. We and are, I'm just checking. There we go. We got our we got our Facebook open, and our Facebook page has recently. And I know I've brought this up, and I I'm sorry I'm bringing this up again, but our Facebook page has blown up in the last two and a half weeks. Um, twelve thousand percent, and that has never, ever, ever happened. Uh, I mean, I've had my Facebook page for ten years, okay, and and I've never seen Facebook blow up this much in my entire life of ever ever doing this stuff in, in any platform um, in the world as has gone up that much. And I appreciate that. I don't know what's happening, and we'll get to the bottom of it eventually, guys. We will get to the bottom of what is happening. And it looks like we're live on all platforms, folks. It looks like it's moving nicely, so I'll have the chat open across the board here. And we have Lorena in the house. We got Dwayne in the house. All right. We got more than two people watching, so we're going to take off. We're going to jump into some major headlines that's going on, typical headlines you don't find anywhere else here on um, headlines or whatever you want to call this or... or uh, uh, it's not morning coffee with Mike. Morning coffee with Mike, more more one on one, reading comments, talking to you, what's going on in your neck of the woods, what's happening, right? And I'm drinking coffee. Here I'm drinking water. So I maybe do headline news. I don't know. Real headline news. How's about that? All right. I hope everyone's doing good out there. Now we got this one coming out of Europe, and we've been telling you that Europe, France in particular, they are spearheading a war against social media. So if you're wondering who is suing all these uh, social media platforms, it's France. France is number one because of the, obviously the fixed elections and all the crap that's been going on and the massive protests by the Yellow Vest movement in 2017, 2018, all that stuff that's been happening all those years. And then Macron just get reselected and all the BS. And France is now going to punish, wants to punish other social media platforms for breaking the law and destroying its own people. And they want us to punish, they want to punish other social media platforms for it, right? So uh, typical, typical, hey, we got Alexandra Lisa there in Facebook. How you doing? Thanks for joining us, being part of the channel, liking and subscribing. So here it is, folks. Read it and weep. EU's media censorship laws are now officially enforceable. Now, this is very, very big. OK, well, but that's the EU, Mike. Who cares? No, 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 no. It starts by continent, by continent, by continent. Right. That's why they forced all these countries into European Union. And then now they could just push the button just like this button right here and they could shut it off right across the board instead of having to get other countries that are not part of the EU on board. And and yeah, so the European Union's draconian new laws on social media content have officially come into force. And the internet has created a global platform allowing almost anyone on the planet to access and share huge amounts of information. So it's hardly surprising that the government and globalists want to be able to filter what is being said and what is heard uh, for their own benefit, of course. So there it is right there. Uh, bring it up. Here it is. So today, the Digital Services Act, DSA, we've been talking about that on the channel for over three years now, has become legally enforceable uh, for very large online platforms search engines these uh okay let's just play the, the quick pick here today the digital services act the so-called dsa becomes legally enforceable for very large online platforms and search engine you see that accent i'm hinting a french accent there why because france needs to go dark because of the amount of bs that they've done and all kinds of stuff it's been it's it's crazy so let's keep going uh, these systemic platforms play a very, very important role uh, on our daily life. And it is really the time now for Europe, for us, to set our own rules. The DSA is here, here to protect free speech against arbitrary decisions. And at the same time, 
to protect our citizens and democracies against illegal content. My services and I will now uh, be very, very rigorous to check that systemic platforms comply with the DSA. We'll be investigating and sanctioning them if not the case. We'll make uh, uh, the online environment safer. Safer. So these pieces of crap, what these pieces of garbage are doing now, because they've destroyed France and the, 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 the protesting going on since 2017, the Yellow Vest movement is going strong. For years, they had to pull the trigger on the pandemic, like we said, we said before it happened, right? So this is, guys, you're tuned into a pre-COVID channel. We were 10 years before COVID. So we've been talking about all this stuff and we've been, now they're going to start censoring. So the DSA presented a tool for the EU to rein in the power of social media corporations. But in reality, its primary purpose is to give EU legal precedents to force big tech companies to apply for EU censorship. So there it is. This is major. This is huge. So hopefully other bigger platforms could take this and run with it and become an absolute hero. So I'm checking out the comments across the thing. We got people commenting on Facebook everywhere. And we don't got too many people watching us on YouTube, surprisingly. I got, and uh, we'll, we'll, you know what? We don't got a lot of people watching this at all anyway. It's just a small family we have here over the last 12, 13 years. Okay, what's going on here? U.S. government now using AI to detect throt criminals on social media. So remember the thought criminals? Remember we talked about 1984 back on the 2016 Mike of the Night? Uh, we talking about uh, 1984 and we were talking about Soylent Green and how Soylent Green took place in 2022. That's kind of weird, man. But yeah, so the US government have begun using artificial intelligence to detect thought criminals on social media and report them to law enforcement for further action. Biden's Cust uh, Customs and Border Protection, CBP, another bullcrap, uh, alphabet company that's being funded by taxpayers under the umbrella another umbrella piece of crap and the department of homeland security dhs has been partnering with ai tech firm called fivecast to deploy social media remember that name guys fivecast we brought this up before remember to deploy social media surveillance software that detects problematic problematic so if a new variant's flowing through or 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 uh, somebody somewhere does something and yeah, trust me. And you, you make a joke about something. Oh my God. Uh, AI tech, a five cast deploy social media surveillance software that detects problematic thoughts and emotions of social media users and subsequently reports them to the police for possible punishment. So now they are moving forward on this. They are so moving forward on this because they, Social media is wide open and they don't want this. They don't want, um, they don't want this folks. They don't want this to get out to the public. They don't want the masses to know about this. So we got somebody spamming, spamming the, um, spamming, um, uh, something about, uh, a page here. Someone's spamming a page, the, sp the page here to go on, uh, what's it called? That, uh, I've been kicked off of that, uh, platform too. So, uh, I don't want to promote platforms, uh, or people to go on platforms that I'm banned from for, uh, freely speaking. All right. The AI surveillance tool DHS uses to detect sentiments and emotion. So there is risk over time. What a bunch of garbage. What a bunch of waste of taxpayers money. Taxpayers are paying for this emotion detection garbage. You can't make this stuff up. So Customs and Border Protection, part of the Department of Homeland Security, after 9-11, folks, you guys know what happened with the Patriot Act, has bought millions of dollars worth of software from a company that uses artificial intelligence to detect sentiment and emotion. So there it is right there, folks. Let's move on. Now, the chess pieces are moving, guys. You guys know... Um, you guys know that um, the chess pieces are moving on the board. Uh, we're, we're at, what, 6, 7, 8, 9D chess? 10G, 10D chess? Where are we at? Where are we at here? What, what, what is this now? We were talking about 4D chess back in 2012 on the channel. Look where we are now. North Korea warns of nuclear war as U.S., Japan, South Korea stage drills. 
Oh, they're going to be staging drills. Of course, they're going to be saber rattling. And the United States, South Korea, and Japan have staged joint maritime missile missile drills. Oh, what a what a treat! Off the Korean Peninsula, drawing condemnation from North Korea, which warned Washington and its allies of the danger of nuclear war. The drills on Tuesday took place off of South Korea's southern Jeju Island, following the U.S. deployment of some of its most advanced weaponry, including nuclear-armed ballistic missile submarines, to the peninsula. Destroyers equipped with the AGS system to track and shoot down missiles were used in the drills, which was the first in its kind after the leaders of all three nations pledged to improve security cooperation. The South Korean military said the exercise were carried out in a bid to improve the military force's ability to detect, track, and targets, track targets and share information about Pani Gangyangula uh, ballistic uh, missile launches. So Pyu Yang's, so Pyu Yang, uh, you know how I pronounce that every time on the show. So, <laughs> all right. So we don't got too many people watching us live on Facebook, which is really interesting, but we're blowing up on Facebook on our shorts and old videos we put up. So I'm kind of monitoring that. Uh, we don't have, I think we have, oh, we got two people watching us on Odyssey. So I'm just kind of going over the, uh, we got, one person watching us on Rumble? Yeah. Oh, we got 24 people on Rumble. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rumble. Thank you so much. So that's what's going on there, folks, with the drills. And Italy. Italy overwhelmed by record-breaking migrant arrivals. So we've been covering the takeover of Europe by my by migrants. Rome, a record-breaking number of illegal migrants have arrived on Italy's shores this weekend, leading Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney to call on an emergency meeting Monday to confront the situation. She's actually doing something about this. She's actually been working forward towards fixing this problem because like we said on this channel, when the third world burns, the first world dies. So when countries become destabilized by western countries and destroying and dividing countries then what happens well then people start to leave those countries and move to the first world so when the third world burns the first world dies and that's something we've been very vocal about here and emotion detection software says moonbug in the comments here we got Dwayne. uh they are obtuse and then we got i love italy says Dwayne. so so there it is right there, folks, and migrants are coming over, and Maloney also called for more efficient reparation of clandestine immigrants and an investigation into further legislative measures to combat illegal immigration and trafficking in, uh, in human beings uh, and the consequences of irregular immigration in terms of public security. So they want to, obviously, the UN and the world, the WHO and all those losers there, want to have um obviously want open borders and we had a big open borders thing i think it was june of 2019 how they were pushing for open borders and that doesn't include if you okay so if you live in canada and want to go to the states and want to sell your house that's been laundered by chinese like you you've you bought a house for 220 now it's worth 2.2 million dollars and you want to sell that house for 2.2 million dollars and go down to florida and buy a house for 140 grand it's a, a big problem getting over there. It's a big problem if you have money to go to the States. They want they want more of like migrants coming into the States, right? Uh, so Valerie saying, sorry I missed the beginning of the show. Don't worry about it, folks. You can always go back and watch the replay. And uh, I just want to type in the comments here to let people know that we are here live. And um, all right. And our friends over on YouTube, how you guys doing there? So that's what's happening to Italy. Let's move on. Central banks just made it clear they aren't in control and don't pretend to be. And this is what I've been very vocal about. So if you go across my YouTube channel going back 10 years, you'll see what I have to say about the banking system and don't trust the banking system. Don't trust the shadow banking. Don't trust the money laundering. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. And I've been warning. Sorry, guys, there's, an, there's a video running down here and I don't want it to flag my video some rappers or something i just i'm gonna go over to the next uh running u.s wyoming since 1981 as such it's it spans almost the entire so basically saying don't trust banks i don't want that video to flag my video down 
because I don't want to, I'm not selecting to watch the video. So there it is right there. And he breaks down the sub sustainability of the banking system and the defaults and the bad books. And that's all we've been talking about on this channel for years now. And look what it is. Piece of crap number four. Zelensky boasts U.S. will definitely keep sending billions to Ukraine no matter who wins the election. So Americans are being bled dry by this piece of garbage over here with this proxy war. And and then and American families are being bled dry through taxation, through uh, increases in costs and to fund this proxy war that is all tied to money laundering money laundering yeah 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 just money laundering that's what it's all about money laundering follow the money and it's all money laundered the u.s will continue to sending billions to ukraine regardless of who sits in the white house in the same manner as washington supports israel according to ukrainian president vladimir Zelensky. a potential leadership change in the white house would not affect the the commitment the Ukraine leader said, and he insisted. So according to him, if Donald Trump becomes president, according to this guy, okay, he will continue sending billions of dollars to Ukraine to get laundered. So that's what it's all about, right? So we got Rebel Zoe saying there's uh, two storms coming to Florida that will make people homeless. Uh-oh. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Probably we'll bring it up on Mike of the Night this Saturday and see where it's at. All right, we got uh, Canada, the safest country in the world. They took all the guns. It's so free. Canada, the freest country. So safe. Well, I used to go to this mall as a kid, Yorkdale Mall. I used to go there as a child growing up. And chaotic scene at Yorkdale Mall captured on video. Holy, this is coming from our friends from the Toronto Sun. A horde of young people can be seen running wildly inside of Yorkdale, Yorkdale Mall Shopping Center. A chaotic scene captured on video footage and circulating across social media channels. And there it is right there. That's Biz, 6 Biz TV. Police investigating chaotic behavior at Yorkdale Mall. And, um, and it's obviously going to open my Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter, folks, but nobody, I don't have any followers on there. So there it is right there, folks. These, this looks like a team takeover. The team takeovers they're having in, in Chicago. So I would <laughs> I just wanted to share that with you there from that uh, website there. And yeah, chaotic behavior at Yorkdale Mall. I used to go to the mall as a kid. I used to go there all the time and shop. Uh, that's when, 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 when um, Toronto used to be predominantly European. It used to be Italian, uh, Portuguese, uh, Greek. Um, it was predominantly European laborers that came over to build this stuff. And they're nowhere to be found anymore in the cities anymore. They're being deported or they're moving out or finding uh, greener pastures. Okay, let's move on. Thank you guys for joining and being part. Mysterious black curtain and special police spotted around Maui's Ground Zero. And volunteer reporter uh, Jeff Saiguns, who's been reporting exclusively on the aftermath of Maui after deadly fires raised the uh raise the island has released a new video that shows massive black curtain that has been uh resurrected around um, around maui's ground zero now we need to go back here guys if that's okay we need to go back real quick now we discussed something and we actually brought something up that was very crucial and i i, I noticed this because somebody brought it to my attention now when australia now bear with me here when australia was burning we did a Mike in the Night, Australia burns as leadership looks for a distraction to stop protesting. 
Australia is in deep state of emergency. This is all three. This is all during the the uh, the, Friday, the fires. Australia waters go water goes corporate while country burns. So they corporate corporatized the water while the country was burning. So the country couldn't use water to put out the fires to punish people. Right. And 2019 was the year of the protest. Everybody was protesting. Every almost every country, I think, except Iceland. And like seven other countries were not protesting, but every other country was protesting in 2019. Now, I brought something up that's very important. And somebody said, Mike, you need to kind of rehash this video to show people. I'll just tell you guys. When we made that video, we were discussing controlled burning. How, um, what do you call those? Uh, uh, um, nature preservists and, and leftists and kooks. We're saying that, oh, burning, burning, uh, uh, natural burning and, and controlled burning and back burning is, is destructive to the ecosystem. So you've got these health nuts and these, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, environmental uh, um, activists protesting against uh, controlled burning. So Australia didn't see controlled burning for four to six years. And we read off a list. We said United States, Canada, um, New Zealand all have halted and ceased and assisted and stopped controlled burning for years now. We mentioned California. We mentioned Hawaii. We mentioned the interior of British Columbia. And we also mentioned, and we also mentioned the, um, uh, uh, out of just, just steps out of Anchorage, Alaska. There's a very uh, a place there in an Alaskan area that needs to be controlled burned to protect the cities. So we actually went over these cities. We were talking about all the brush and all the dryness growing up around the telephone bowls, growing out around hydro poles and uh, rural park areas, and none of the controlled burning was being done. And we were reporting it back here. When Australia burns as leadership looks for a distraction to stop protesting. And we actually mentioned Hawaii was one of the areas and regions that wasn't doing controlled burning anymore back in 2019. Wow. When you start connecting these dots, you start to realize what is going on. Yes. So someone's saying Australia is a corporation, then saying parks and recreation is the cause of most of these fires. That's right. So when you go to the parks and recreation, especially when they have those big hydro towers and they have all this stuff around that's kind of in the park area just to keep it away from the residential areas. Yes, those places, they have they have not controlled burned them in years. OK, now Maui, now Maui paid for it because of these environmentalists that were basically against the same environmentalists that that protested against Stephen Molyneux visiting Australia David Icke visiting Australia, those same environmental protests that don't pay taxes and actually don't fund, they don't even pay for the controlled burning. So why are these environmentalists and leftists all going nuts when they don't even pay for the controlled burning and back burning? And, 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 and I, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. So this is what's happening. Sheridan Forbes in the house. Thank you for joining us. And uh, U.S. is a corporation, too, says Dana. So I, I kind of wanted to put this out there that we've been we have been on. We've been very vocal about this over the years. So kind of wanted to put this out there, because when you go back to some of these videos going back five, six, seven, look, uh, uh, ANZ Ponzi, Australia housing crisis in Australia four years ago. Uh, ANZ Bank Group is loosening some of its clamps to, uh, to it will put interest only mortgages lending in 2017 after pledging a reopen of the door of property investors following a period of exclusive of excessive caution. So they're going to reopen to foreign investor investors. Chinese takeover of Canada and Australia and New Zealand. And lastly, the USA by 2024, six years ago, right here, six years ago. Chinese takeover of Canada, Australia. And I'm warning you guys, warning and warning and trying to make sense and trying to wake people up. Look, like how many views? 245 views, 300 views. No, Nobody, nobody cares, right? It's. I don't think nobody cares. I think YouTube is controlling where people get to see and what people get to see. All right. Too many NPCs around. Go back to Mike of the Night 2017. We had a whole show on NPCs. Are these people part of us? 
Are they not part of us? Are they here to play a game? We had Supreme Cannon on that show in 2017, I think it was. Yeah, I got to find the NPC show. NPC World. And if you want to find a good mic in the night, watch World War Woke. World War Woke Part 1 we did back in 2016 with Collins when they were taking down statues and taking down uh, Founding Fathers, stuff of the Founding Fathers and the Ten Commandments. Okay, UK, watch this. Conservative counselor is arrested for hate crime for a tweet defending free speech. So it's happening in the UK, and I'm telling you, if you're going to defend, I'm begging Americans, I'm begging Americans, please don't give up your guns. Please, Americans, don't give up your guns. Please, Americans, keep your guns. Buy a gun for your gun. Buy a gun to protect your other gun. Buy a gun to protect that other gun. Please, please, America, don't give up your guns because we're finished. I mean, Canada will burn. Canada will go dark. A conservative councillor from Wellenboro, England, has been reportedly been arrested and probed for a supposed hate crime over his engagement in the sharing of a video of critical critical of police confrontation with a Christian street preacher. The chilling event highlighted the increasing state of intervention on individuals. Freedom of expression stirs growing concerns around the fast erosion of democratic values and liberties in Britain. So... Police are, are actually attacking street preachers, right? And only in America, Biden releases $77 million to aid illegal immigration. As forced with uncontrolled illegal immigration in the United States, the administration of President Select Joe Biden has added fuel to the fire by releasing an additional $77 million to 53 non-government organizations so these people are going to line their pockets with government tit money they're off the government tit so non-government organizations so what that means is you're going to have more and more public servants walking around your town coming into your private store your private sector mom and pop's business to tell you how you should be running your business i get that in my town i get government workers coming in all the time to my little toy store yeah if you want to win people in this town you got to start doing this you want to do this i say i'm fangolo get out of here I don't need a six-figure income government worker that doesn't know what he's doing for his job coming in and tell me how to run my business because I'm funding your funding your your tit. Okay, this is happening with Mexican truckers. Mike got any updates? Uh, let's find out here if we got anything open for that here today. And the announcement was made earlier, Department of Homeland Security, another DHS alphabet piece of crap group that has been uh, sucking off the public tit for eons now. The NSA, another alphabet piece of garbage, tells employees to surveil people with dignity and respect. Of course! Of course they're going to... They, you, you have to, man. They have to. So someone says, I caught up on Mike in the night. Sorry, I missed the live. Would would have called, have you found Marcy? Uh, should talk about the early 20th century Canadian history, Mike. I feel history may repeat in the 21st century. Massive deportation. Uh, head tax. Realize first. So lots of topics here to cover. So they're going to be spying on people with dignity and respect. The National Security Agency, NSA, and this is coming from our friends at Reclaim the Net, uh, a highly classified agency spearheading American electronic espionage has imposed a new directive to its employees. The directive places the emphasis on foreign intelligent targets being treated with dignity and respect. This guidance is primarily for the department in charge of future surveillance and global data collection, notorious, notoriously known as the Signals Intelligence, the Signet Division, and we discussed the Signet Division before on here. As reported by The Intercept, the uh, internal directive disclosed by in the balmy days of summer said that in the recognition of Signet, activists must take into account that all persons should be treated with dignity and respect regardless of their nationality or whatever they might re wherever they might reside. The ma the, the ma this massive was conf conferred by the esteemed NSA director, Jen Paul Nakason, who adequately juked a post. I'm not going to read this. All right, let's move on. And the Washington Post calls for reducing free speech to improve democracy. And we've been very vocal on this channel about d digital book burning and erasing 
history for a safer and better future. And that's why I keep telling people to buy books. Buy books. Buy old history books. Buy old farmer's almanacs. Buy and preserve knowledge. Buy and preserve knowledge. So largest and oldest truck company in Yellowstone is now gone, says David. Yep, the, the governments are going to force trucking companies to go bankrupt so governments could federalize all transport. Transport of your food, your goods, your supplements, whatever. So if you guys um, been following us now, you know that. Uh, so Washington Post is called Reducing... So in a very uh, in very post-2016 fashion, the Washington Post last week published an article implying democracy might require curb on freedom of speech. This unsettling approach suggests that concerns around misinformation on social networks supersede freedom of speech, a move that has elected uh, uh, intense debate and rightly so criticism. In what appears to be a shift in public discourse towards further censorship, the widely read Washington Post article critiqued Elon Musk's reinstatement of the former president Donald Trump and social media platform X, previously known as Twitter. So they're they're afraid of people coming in to make a difference and actually fix the country. Anyone that's going to anyone that's going to come in and fix the country is an enemy of the state. Anyone that wants to come in and repair and bring a bring the country back to bring bring the country back to where it should be, guess what? They're an enemy of the state. You posting something like this on your social media, you're an enemy of the state. Everyone's an enemy of the state, right? And what else we got here? Let's keep moving forward. Uh, Turkish house prices more than double. Property co costs globally saw year-on-year -year growth of 3.6%. So we are seeing a house prices uh, grew 135.3%, making the biggest increases across the country. So Turkey's now seeing the unaffordable housing, All right? Panama Canal restrictions expected to last for at, at least 10 months, large containers to reroute to Zerus Canal. Now, okay, guys, this is kind of important, and um, I kind of want to bring this up. Um... So, guys, if you miss any of these big articles that we put up here, most of the time, you could go the next day on InfoWars. They actually cover a lot of these articles like a day after we cover them. You could go on and you'll see that a lot of this stuff, because people have been sending me links, like flooded with links, and it's coming from that organization. And uh, usually if you miss this, the live stream, you could always pick up the next day stream, and they're usually picking up some of this stuff that, like these little scrap Articles that no one else picks up, and they they pick that they they pick this stuff apart, right? So, uh, Panama Canal restrictions expected to last for at least ten years. Well, you know why? You know why? Because they want to conserve water, so they want to put your imports and stuff that you need because your country exported all your stuff. Your country exported all all your jobs. Sorry, your your jobs got exported to other countries. Okay. So what? So now you got to import your stuff. So what? So now they're making it harder for your stuff to come in. So global shipping has been urged to share trans transit plans on the global blah, blah, blah. The consequences of drought, onset El Nino, weather phenomena. So again, back to global warming and climate change. So they want to lessen the amount of people using the Panama Canal and you know transport and shipping and all that and all that jazz you know why to save and preserve water in the ocean that's everlasting amen yes that's everlasting amen yeah they're gonna find problems with supply chains right so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna reread this one a little bit better clearer because i'm gonna make a single video out of this so here we go, guys. Panama Canal restrictions expected to last for at least 10 months. Large containers to reroute the Suez Canal. And why is this being done, folks? Very simply, very simply, to because of El Nino and climate change. So they shipped all our jobs overseas. In return, we have to import more. Now they're making our imports almost impossible to get. 
and they're making imports and they're going to be federalizing our imports as more trucking companies go bankrupt and they're rerouting ships into other jurisdictions so we can't get our stuff, life-saving supplies and stuff that we need. And global shipping has been urged to share transit plans at one of the world's key migrant crossings following the Panama Canal Authority officials warning that water conserving restrictions water conserving restrictions fangoro water in the ocean you see this bs so as a consequence of the drought and the onset of the el nino weather phenomena so they're going to make all these words and word salad them and yes, they do use seawater in the canal. Someone's asking in the comments. Yes, they do use seawater in the canal. So, and canals deputy administer, uh, blah, 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 Sunday, uh, the restrictions would remain in place for at least the next 10 months. So they're doing everything humanly possible to ship our jobs out overseas and then, and then politely, uh, you know, we have to import them then and create jobs overseas. So we import them. And we import our stuff, and now they're blockading our stuff from coming in. So we are basically helpless. Especially if you, you know, if you're into, if you're a natural path, or you, you depend on certain things or proteins or whatever you got have to bring in because you're not making it locally anymore. Guess what? Now, now they're going to make people suffer on every angle, and that's why I keep saying they're going to tax us to death, and they're going to federalize everything. All right, let's keep going here, folks. 13 Pakistani migrants arrested for arson as deadly wildfires erupt near Greek border. So we told you guys, we told you guys, oh, something's wrong with my mic here. Okay, let me just maybe reread that then again. Okay, 13 Pakistani and Syrian migrants arrested for arson as deadly wildfires erupt near Greek border. And... Migrants hope for easier entry by causing chaos. So what's happening? Obviously, we know that a lot of the fires, 99% of the fires that you're seeing around the world is arson. Uh, for the past week, uh, Greece has once again been plunged by wildfires, particularly in the vicinity of Alexandropolis in the northeast of the country near the border with Turkey, which is close to where 13 Pakistani and Syrian migrants were arrested from. The video posted on social networks last Tuesday say the group was caught red-handed trying to start a, a fire near the town of Alexa Dropopius that has been charged with illegal entry and attempt attempted arson by public prosecutor by the government source, says the fire the public source says the fire was an accident. So obviously public defenders are stating that these fires are an accident. The fires have been plaguing Greece all summer and in all mo in the most recent cases, several bodies have been found charred by flames. So far, Greek authorities say 20 lives have been lost due to wildfires. So this is all being put on fire. This is all being put on purpose by the hand of man. And that's what the Greek... Greek, the Greeks were reporting that by the hand of man, these fires are coming. And it's punishment, right? We're being punished. They're punishing us on every front. And you don't want to believe in global warming? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to burn you down, boy. I'm going to burn you down. I'm going to burn you down real good. You don't want to believe in our global warming? Watch this. Or climate change or climate emergency or whatever they call it this week. Watch this. We're going to burn you and your family. And that's what they're coming for. Because we just have no more confidence in governments for years now. All right, let's keep going. Notting Hill Carnival. Officers bitten, eight stabbed, and 275 arrested for, for knife possession, drugs, and sexual assault at UK Migrant Festival. So there's the UK Migrant Festival there for you folks to see. And there was a... A bunch of uh, outbreaks of fights and uh, uh, black youths were f were filmed running down the streets with machetes at this New Year's Notting Hill Carnival. And um, an annual festival uh, dedicated to promoting cultural heritage of the ethnic minorities who migrated to Britain has yet again been 
marred by serious violence with eight people stabbed and police officers bitten and 275 arrests made. And oof, I don't know if I could even play this on, uh, on, I don't know if I could even play this here, but, um, oh, maybe I could play this. This, this, this one's on, 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 on Twatter. Here, so. Yeah, I, I would want to be one. I, if I was in this thing, I would want to be this cool dude here eating ice cream right here. Yeah, I'd be one of the, I would, I'd, I'd, I'd want to be one of these cool dudes standing here having an ice cream and just watching everything as it goes by peacefully and gracefully. But yeah, that's what's happening. 275 arrests. All right. Germany. Man who brutally stabbed two children in Berlin schoolyard has case dropped. We'll see no jail. So, yeah. So this we covered this on Mike in the Night a few weeks back. A month or a month and a half back when the story was breaking, who brutally stabbed two children in Berlin schoolyard and has case dropped. And despite 34 year old Berman S. Break, uh, uh, breaking into the Protestant school of multicult uh, in the multicultural Berlin neighborhood of Neil uh and stabbing two little girls, his crime will go unpunished. Instead, the courts have ruled that due to the mental illness, he cannot be held responsible for stabbing case, in which two eight-year-old girls nearly lost their lives after suffer suffering multiple st uh, wounds to their neck and chests. So, yeah, that's what's happening. Man. And that's what's going to be happening in Canada. Canada's going to... Um... So, rural, rural Germany is falling, and Ukraine will run out of troops... There it is, folks. Ukraine will run out of troops. Zelensky wants to speed up recruitment, but the pool of reservists is getting smaller. So they've been ripping people off of the streets, and there's obviously no confidence in this war and no confidence in government. And the Ukrainian military leadership is facing a serious problem due to the soaring casualties as the death toll of the conflict and recent stalled counteroffensive become clear it is becoming increasingly difficult to replace these lost soldiers recruitment is being made uh exceedingly difficult by the fact that they are fleeing conscription even at a great risk while others are simply bribing recruiters so we talked about this whole recruiting thing and you see the beaches in the ukraine and beaches not beaches was a pool sorry pools pools across the ukraine just people having fun, enjoying having drinks, and uh, yeah, it's it's they're having a great time over in the Ukraine, and they're and they are ripping people off the streets. They're ripping them off, and they're bringing them, and they're and they're taking them in these paddy wagons, and they are basically giving them a gun and forcing them to fight. Kind of like when the Irish came along, when the Irish uh, came along to America, they were given guns at, on their arrival and to go fight for the North, go fight for the Crown, go fight for the Red Shields, right? So we got, wow, we got 90 people watching this. Let's see if there's any noise on Facebook here. Uh, we don't got no one. We got nine people on Facebook watching. And I think I got a person. Hey, I got a person there on Odyssey watching. And let's see if there's anyone on Rumble. Whoa, we got 20 people watching on Rumble. Woo! So we are out there. We are getting out there, folks. Uh, Digital Morpheus is in the house there. And Mass Entertainment's in the house. Woo! All right, going over a few more headlines here, and I'm going to let you guys go for the day. And and we'll go from there, right? So, okay. Swedes urged not to wear branded clothing. Okay, all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start. The... <clears throat> okay, you're not going to believe this one. Swedes urged not to wear branded clothing or jewelry amid spike in robberies and migrant gang violence. So if you're in Sweden, folks... And you like to wear some Gucci or Vuitton or whatever those guys are called or whoever those people are. And you like to sport and show and, and you, know, you know what I mean. You like to wear $10,000 around with you everywhere you go. Well, they're urging you in Sweden not to wear branded clothing. Police in the Swedish city of Kartslad are warning residents to stay away from certain areas of the city where migrant gangs rule the roost. So they are picking up all kinds. Police in the Swedish county of Varmandaland 
have urged residents not to wear branded clothing or expensive jewelry when walking through the country's largest city of Karstadt due to the rise in robberies and migrant gang violence. And there is the news outlet here reporting this. And obviously it's, I don't, I don't know what that, I don't know what this means. So it's in German of, or Swedish, of course, so I can't read it. And we see young people rob others and sell items, she added. The young people referred to as primarily recruits to migrant gangs, which have surged in notoriety across Sweden in recent years, as started several high-ranking law enforcement officers and Magdalene Andersson when she was serving as Swedish prime minister last year. So they are going around. So imagine walking around, you're on vacation, and like, we got to dress down. And you know what? We used to hear that. We used to hear about that when I was a kid growing up, okay? And we used to go to downtown Detroit because it wasn't far. We would take a day, spend the day in Michigan State and go to Detroit and other areas, right? And um, Or maybe ca catch a Michigan 500, like a NASCAR race or something, right? And I remember people when we were in the city of Toronto saying, oh, when you go to Detroit, you got to make sure you got to dress down. You can't wear anything flashy. You can't show them you have money. You got to make sure you look real dirt poor and you got to make sure you got nothing. Well, that was Detroit, right? And, and Detroit went through a really tough time. But now Sweden is they're urging people in Sweden not to wear flashy or uh, flashy clothing or wow. All right, let's keep going here. Okay, can't read that. Okay, guys, if you want, people keep asking me for the most powerful, uh, the most powerful. It's in the, in, in the, uh, in the, um, guys, if you go into, there it is right there. There's a link to it. That's the most powerful uh, glutathione on earth. And if you want, I left you guys a link in the live chat there, and I'll leave you guys a link in the live Facebook chat. If you guys want to take some glutathione and want to research what it is. The website shows you everything you need to know. So if you guys really want to pick some up and give it a try, I promise you, I promise you, you'll see change. I promise that that I could promise in many aspects. I can't really say anything. I don't, I can't really, you know, against going against the whole, um, you know, you don't want to go against the FDA or any of those people. So there's the glutathione right there. If you guys want to pick it up, I left you guys a link in all the chat boxes if you guys care to um, try it out give it a try and it, it also helps fund the transmission i'm not gonna lie we need to yeah all right let's keep going and canada's student visa strategy takes off nearly one in 48 people on a study permit so canada has seen a surge in study permits issued and this is canada issued 35 percent more international student permits and this is very important because if the Canada wants to keep its Ponzi housing scheme going for many more years to come, they need to bring in more permits. And it ties to this one. Watch this. Right on live. Canada. And they want to bring in more money from China. And Canada wants more Chinese. So there it is right there. Workers and students and tourists. And they're opening offices and this is from 2016. They're, oh, they're about 500,000 per year. And all these people coming in are not counted towards Immigration Stats Canada. They're not, they're not counted. These are considered investors. So they bring – and they're lucrative. And Canada wants to open more offices with taxpayers' money to fast-track more Chinese as Canada deports more Portuguese. And that's kind of the story of how it goes. And Canada would be in a recession. And when they bring the money over, Canada would be in a recession – without money laundering. So there it is right there. And we're reporting this back in 2019. Canada would be in a recession without money laundering. And the more Chinese money that comes in and the hundreds of billions of dollars per province, and that's up until 2015 because the money laundering task force was shut down because they're not going to arrest any Canadians. So if and no Canadians get arrested, they, they don't want to deal with it, right? You could arrest them, an immigrant and a migrant or a money launderer or a criminal? No, you can't do that. All right. Chinese scientists look to 6G to hunt, sub, to hunt submarines testing device small enough to fit on drone. So defense researchers say 
Researchers say sensors can identify extremely small surfaces, vibrations produced by low-frequency sounds source in the open sea. The UAV-mounted platform could work in concert with other submarine detection methods such as magnetic anomaly detector, MAD, microwave radar, or laser. So they are producing these smaller submarines, right? So a world's first submarine detecting device based on next-gen communication. So I wonder how big it's going to be. Does it? I'm not going to pay to read this, but uh, it's it's small. Small surface vibrations. Se uh, sensors can identify. Okay, so it's a, it's a drone. So it's, uh, it's a drone. It's a drone size item, right? All right. And Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Iran, among six countries invited to join emerging BRICS global superpower. And basically, they're going to offset or it's an offshoot to the petrodollar that America has. They've been building this for years. Uh, we were reporting it on the channel back when Rusoff, right here, there she is. When she was the, the, when she was the president of Brazil, she introduced the BRICS idea with her in South Africa and India and Russia and China originally and they were working towards uh uh like a unified currency and but 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 um the president in Brazil that was cheated out that was cheated out of the last election right Bolsonaro the Donald Trump of Brazil well Bolsonaro was cheated out of the last election by a landslide he was cheated out badly and he was against the whole BRICS thing he was actually more leaning towards a petro more of an economic American backed economy, believe it or not. So they fixed the election, got Bolsonaro out, put Lula in, a known criminal that's been arrested multiple times, into office. And guess what? He um he's back on the bricks. They're back on the bricks and they have reasurged the bricks. All right, let's keep going here. First alien, first ever alien object found on Earth, Harvard physics, physicist Avi Libob says hundreds of tiny fragments are found at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean are from outside our solar system. I don't believe in this. I call it BS. If it comes, it comes from outer space. It's not alien technology. There, and this is the headline that's, that's making headlines in, in, in the UK in Daily Mail. So I call bullshit on that. And dozens of terrorists killed in joint Syria-Russia airstrike in Idlib, 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 and another airstrike there in Syria, Russia airstrike. And boys use dating app Grinder to kidnap Bashman, who later died. A sleepy teenager, moments after his arrest in the sleepy seaside town of Browley. The 17 year old schoolboy in his tracksuit pants led by homicide detectives to a waiting car. His friend, woken by police at first light, just a few streets away. Did so basically what happened was boys uh, used dating app Grinder to kidnap Bashman, who later died. And neurosurgeon pulls live worm from brain of Australian woman hospitalized with mystery illness. There's your, your worm there. And that's that for now, folks. I, I wanted to go over a few headlines and, and talk a little bit. Guys, if you want to join us on Mike in the Night every Saturday, you guys are going to have to go on Rumble and find the channel. And if you guys want to go on Mike in the Night, you're more than welcome to join us. Be part of the channel. Like and subscribe. Maybe I should leave you the last 519. Yeah, 519 wasn't that bad. 519 went on for four hours, though. So you don't have to sit around for four hours. You could just leave it in the background. There's the last episode of Mike of the Night there. Here's the last episode of Mike of the Night here if anyone cares on uh, on the Facebook page. And then we got on Rumble there. Oh, we're putting on Odyssey. Okay, never mind. Yeah, there it is there, folks. If anyone cares to see live Mike of the Night, you're more than welcome to go over to those platforms and check it out and be part of the channel. Uh, Saturday night's really good because you can call in. Saturday nights, everybody knows we're there. Saturday nights, we've been there since 2016. And I'll give you guys maybe a little bit of a guidance thing on where to go because people keep asking for older episodes and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to show you guys here where you can find everything you are looking for. 
So there it is, realmikemartins.com, realmikemartins.com, exactly how it's spelled. You can add me on Skype here. There's the last episode, uh, Open Mic uh, Variants, Maui. And if you want to find old episodes, go to here, go to archives and go NSFWs. People keep asking for this, so I might make it easier for them to find. You click on that, and that basically goes back to almost every episode we made of Mike in the Night going back. Um... Just going back, see, going back, going back. And if you get into some of these, some of these are very vulgar. So I don't recommend you guys watch this with children. And you could go way back to, you go all the way back to 2017 or 2016 if you really wanted to. You could find the old episodes on YouTube too. You could go back and really find them. And if you want to support me, the donor box is here. But there's the glutathione people are asking. Click on the glutathione and it goes here. And if you guys want to pick that up, you're more than welcome to go pick that up. If you want to support the transmission and you guys could buy, we got swag here. We got t-shirts. We got all kinds of stuff here. If you guys want to support the transmission and yeah, I appreciate everybody coming down and being part of the channel today and uh, going over some headline news really wanted to do this for you guys because there's all kinds, all kinds happening, um, all kinds all over the Commonwealth and connecting the dots as, as, as we've been doing all these years and, um, Hopefully we've helped people over the years. Hopefully the group, the call in, the family here has helped and connected with others from around the world. All right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna go head over to the shop if you guys want to come and see me. I'll be at the shop today till five. If you guys want to come and hang out, I'll be there. Mike Martin's here. Thanks for watching. Take care, and if you can't take care, stay safe. Mike Martin's here. I have.